Hi bakers! Today I will be baking a Bats in Your Belfry Black Magic Chocolate Cake just in time for Halloween. So lock the doors, dim your lights, and sit back and enjoy the spine tingling, hair raising baking video. This is everything that you will need for your Black Magic Cake. I will leave the metric and cup measures in the description below. In the bowl of your stand mixer, combine the sugar, the flour, the baking soda, the baking powder and salt, and then mix well. Now you're ready to combine most of your wet ingredients together. So in a large measuring cup or a medium bowl, you're gonna combine your hot coffee, your cocoa powder, your eggs, your vanilla, and your oil, and then you beat everything together really well. Even though the cocoa powder is not a wet ingredient, I like to put it in this step because the hot coffee will make cocoa powder bloom and give it a deeper flavor. Now pour your wet ingredients into your dry ingredients, which you have in your standing mixer, plus the buttermilk and or sour milk. Now mix your batter for two minutes on medium speed. The batter will be on the thin side. Pour your batter into three eight inch pans that have been greased and lined with parchment paper. The parchment paper is important in this particular cake. It will stick if you do not line it. Bake your cake at 350 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center of the cake comes out clean. Then cool the cake in the pans on a rack for about 10 minutes. Then flip the cakes out and let them finish cooling on a wire rack. Now it's time to make the frosting and finish the cake. This is everything that you will need for vanilla buttercream frosting. I will leave the metric and cup measures in the description below. This is my favorite vanilla buttercream. This is a cross between a Swiss meringue buttercream and an American buttercream. And yes, there is about 20,000 different types of buttercream. In the bowl of your standing mixer, and if you have whisk attachments, use them for this because you'll get a much lighter buttercream. Combine your confectionery sugar and your pasteurized egg whites. They have to be pasteurized though. Don't use fresh egg whites for this. Whip your mixture on high for about one to two minutes, just until you dissolve the powdered sugar. Now add your salt and vanilla extract. You can also substitute any other type of extract flavoring that you like. Lemon or orange would be really good. Uh, I always use a clear vanilla extract just because it makes the whitest finished buttercream. With your mixture on high, start slowly adding chunks of softened butter to your mixture. Now, once you've added all of your softened butter, you're then ready to whip it on high for eight to 10 minutes until very white, light, and fluffy. It will no longer taste like butter, but it will taste like a sweet ice cream. It's delicious. Time to decorate. This vanilla buttercream is not as sweet as American buttercream, so you can be generous between the layers with the frosting. Now for this chocolate cake, I always do a crumb coat. A crumb coat is just a thin layer of frosting and the crumb coat seals in any straight crumbs before you add the top and final layer of frosting. So you're gonna put, you wanna put your crumb coat on and then put it in the refrigerator for about 30 to, to 40 minutes until the icing hardens and then put your finished frosting on and this way there'll be no crumbs in your finished frosting. So while you're waiting for your crumb coat to get cold, you can create your bat decorations for the top of the cake and the sides of the cake. So I simply went on the internet and searched for bat silhouette and copy and pasted this image into Microsoft Word. I then uh, enlarged the image and then I printed it out. You're gonna want to do a few images. Some images look great on paper, but they do not look great once you piped it out in chocolate. 
because this is not that much chocolate don't worry about the quality of chocolate you're using for this you could use chocolate chips or you could use uh, compound chocolate or candy melts because you you don't really taste that much of it once you have your image you're simply going to melt some chocolate and put this chocolate in a squeeze bottle or pastry bag and then trace the image on the parchment paper be sure you let the chocolate dry completely before applying to your cake so I chose to use America color electric orange for this cake but you can use whatever you like I tinted three bowls of frosting in varying degrees of color uh, just putting one drop and then two drops and then three drops to get the darkest color now you're going to ombre the cake. You start this by piping bands of frosting around the sides of the cake. You normally start with dark on bottom and gradually go up to the top, which will be your white frosting. Now using a bench knife or an offset palette knife, gently blend and smooth the icing out. Be very careful not to over blend. Now you can finish your cake any way you wanted to. I piped a border uh, with the leftover frosting from scraping the sides of the cake. I just blended them all together. Then I put my little bats around the side of the cake and my great big bat on top of the cake. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified anytime I post a brand new video. Next week, I will be baking apple autumn ham pies using my famous pie crust. This pie crust recipe took me many years to perfect. I hope you come back next week to watch. Happy baking!